Okay, I got my hinges pretty much ready. Now, I always like to I always like to lean these doors down against the wall. Like this. These are hollow core doors. Most interior doors are hollow core. And so I just set it like that. Okay. I've just got it like that. I've got the, the hinge cutouts facing out. You see, facing out this way, facing out, facing out. Lean it up against the wall. Now in new construction, if you don't have the carpet down, I would just take some carpet pad or I take my I take just my little um, knee pad and I would set it down on one side, one end or the other, and just let it stick out so I don't uh, bugger up or scratch or mark up the face of the door. You know what I mean? And that's, that's all I'm going to do for setting it up. Okay, and, and I've got my hinges. I've got my hinges here. I always, I always pop the, the hinge pin out first a little bit. Now you can put the you can put the hinges on the door first, and then and then poke out the the hinge. Okay. So I just I just get these and, and and set them down where I need them. Okay. And of course I gotta get my oh get my screws. Get my screws ready. I've got my little drill here. Okay, let's see how I'm gonna how I'm gonna uh, set this up so that you can kind of see what I'm doing without me being in the way, right? Now you don't have to. You don't have to rush. See, I can pull that out, and and of course I've got the door facing forward. I want to hit so. That way I know which side the hinge uh, should be facing. I don't want to put them all on there and then pull the hinge pin out and then, and then later think, oh, okay, I'll just pop it in that way. I, I like to do it the way that they come. And you can't just set up all your doors. I, I, I would set them all up. You know, if I was doing 15, 20 doors in a commercial tenant improvement or a house or something, I'd set all these up on, up on the wall and I would have a system and you can't just put them all the same direction because left hand swing doors maybe are facing this way. Right hand swing doors maybe are facing the other way. So not you're not always going to have three knuckles on here. Sometimes you're going to have only two knuckles on there. Right? For, for a different handed swing door. Okay, so. I, and I usually like, like to look at the screw holes and if I see one, like this one here, if I were to put that screw in first, the hole is, is drilled too far that direction. So if I put that one in first, it's going to slide this hinge over just a hair. If you follow me? So I'm going to look at this. I'm going to look at the ones that are centered or off to the right. And I see the top one is, so I'm going to do that one first. The middle one is slightly pushed over that way. This one's even further, but so I'm gonna do the middle one first, and hopefully that's not gonna slide out because I've already got that one tight. Okay, that's nice and snug now. And because that one's over, as I tighten it up, it's just gonna roll over into position. There's no way that one's gonna pull out. I got it nice and smooth. If you didn't know that one tip, and you put that one in first and then did these, you're, you're going to have a gap right there. Then when you put the, then forevermore you're going to have a gap whenever you open the door. And if that one's at eye level, you're going to see that. Or somebody else is going to notice it. Or your hinge, your hinge knuckle, your hinge pin's not going to go in exactly right because this one's pushed over and the one on the door frame is pushed straight. So, you know, different, different little, different little things to be aware of, you know. So we'll put this one, we'll put this one in next. I'm just gonna pull. Uh, let's just leave that in, okay? I usually take it out because then it wants to fall off, see? So if, I, if I'm doing it, I, I could set all these up. Boom, 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 boom. Like that, set them all up on the door. Now that middle one, 
I'm doing that one first. These other two are slid over just ever so slightly. But see, now that middle one is going to hold these other two. And it's almost like that pushed it, but nah, it, it's, it looks okay. Because that one's in the middle, these two are off to the side. Both of these should stay in place. I've got that ratcheted type drill. And so that's, that's why it's making that. I'm not stripping the, the screw or anything. Okay. I like the ratcheted, I like the ratcheted drill better than the other. The only problem with the ratcheted drill, you can't drill um, in drill bits and stuff because you gotta pull this out, pop that out, and you've got the end like that. You can get a drill bit with these ends, but still, I find that uh, lots of times your drill doesn't really want to work before it starts chattering. So I've got a regular drill too. Okay, I'm going to do the middle one first. And see, because I got it held out away from the wall, I don't even have to do anything. If you put it too close to the wall, you could have the whole thing slide. You just have to be careful. Okay, that's all I have to do for that. That door is ready to be installed. So now I take the other portion of the, of the hinges and I'm going to set this up over here. And I'm going to put these hinges on. It's simple Simon, man. You can do this. Don't, don't pay somebody else to start rehanging your doors. This is, this is because I... I didn't install these doors brand new, okay? I re repainted them, and if you've been watching all my episodes, you'll see all the different things I had to do uh, on making these doors fit. Lots of them were sagging beforehand. You don't, you don't want to fix a sagging door after you paint. Think, ah, I'll just do it later. No, do it first in case something happens. You have to adjust something, or you make any marks on the existing. Uh, door frames, the door jam, the side of the door jam, whatever. So I've, I've, I had to uh, tweak some of these door frames and all that kind of stuff prior to taking them down. Then I took them down, took all the hinges off, took the doorknobs off, and then I painted them. And I set it up all in the, out in the garage. And I, I show you even how to paint a door. And, um, you know, it's back on one of my other episodes, okay? Look for it on my channel. Okay, so now my second step, I got to put these hinge, the second section of the hinge knuckles on the door frame now. And because I was paying attention, I know that on this particular door, it gets the, the two knuckles. Okay? I, I know that. Now these these hinges are probably interchangeable, so if they come from the store with the, with the hinge pin on the top, lots of times you can put it uh, top or bottom. But other times your hinges might have a little might have a little thing in the bottom of it that um, no matter what you do, you can't put you can't put it any different direction. Okay, without a lot of Hassle. I've taken that little thing off before and flipped it around and, and that kind of stuff, but you shouldn't have to do that if you're paying attention. Okay. These, this, the hole, the pre-drilled hole is in the exact center of every single little hole, so I'm good to go. Don't have to. I could have put. I could have put the top screw in first, the bottom screw in first, the middle one in first. That one didn't really matter. Okay. And, I'll, you know, some, sometimes it matters. So you just have to kind of, you just have to pay attention. These are all lined up fine too. Every once in a while you'll find that a screw hole is not 
lined up. And then you have to make a decision. Okay, which screw do I put in first? Now see that one is that one is spinning. That top screw is spinning. And see there? And if I had to replace that, I would have to pre-drill a hole, put it in at an angle, because I couldn't just put a longer screw in there and go straight because the sheetrock uh, is a half inch thick. That screw is right in line with the sheetrock edge over there. I'd have to put it in at an angle, but the other two screws are fitting tight. And if that was the top, if that was the top hinge, I would be more inclined to want to think about putting another screw in there and sticking it in at an angle and pre-drilling it and getting longer screws and all that kind of stuff because if a door is ever going to sag which hinge is more likely to sag than any of the other ones yes the top one right the top one now this time i'm gonna I'm going to check these with my screwdriver. Yeah, see those, those two are spinning. That one's tight. Those two are slightly spinning. But because it's at the bottom, you know, nothing's ever going to happen to this door. I think it's going to be fine. I'm leaving it. I'm not going to I'm not going to mess with it. Now, if I wanted to, uh, I could do just the middle screw and then put uh, get a get a longer one and drill it uh, pre-drill it straight into the two by four in the back because that the middle screw is sticking out further than the top two screws okay the top two screws are lined up with the sheetrock I could do it on the middle one if I ever had to do anything to this door and if something was getting funky down at the bottom I could put a longer screw right there in that middle one but I'm not going to because like I say the thing is the thing is pretty pretty sturdy anyways and um, it's a hollow core door it's only a, a six foot eight tall door it's not an eight foot tall door and it's at the bottom and so all the weight's transferred to the center and the bottom one from the from the uh, from the door you see what I mean and so I don't think this door is ever going to sag especially down at the bottom if anything if I ever had to adjust it if there was more gap down there at the bottom, if I had to adjust that and put screws on the back side of that hinge and tweak it out, then yes, of course I would have to get other screws, uh, longer screws to tighten up and do all that kind of stuff. You know, just, if you watch, if you watch my, uh, my videos, I got, I got a ton of videos uh, that are not in this episode series of the condo renovation. If you want to watch those different ones on a different house where I fix all kinds of doors, sagging doors and all that kind of stuff, uh, go to my main channel page, click on playlists, and then go down to doors. You know, scroll down to doors. Any door a video that I've ever done on this channel that I posted this channel, I then put on a playlist under those doors. If you want to watch those, have at it. Okay, so now I'm ready to, to pop this door into place. See, it doesn't, it doesn't take very long to do this. You can do this kind of stuff. If you're going to paint, you're going to paint and you're going to paint your own doors and you're going to change out. Even if you're not changing to new hinges, you can take the old hinges off. You can replace the, the old hinges like for like, just like I'm doing. Okay. And, and, and reinstall your existing hinges. You don't even have to install new ones. We're just installing new ones because she didn't like the brass in here. She liked she likes the nickel finish. And, and to be honest, uh, because we changed the paint, um, this is called Double Click from Home Depot. It's kind of a gray color. I, I like it. And then I repainted the ceilings white. They weren't white before. And now putting the nickel finished hardware on there it just it just adds something to to here and and it's a good look but if you got the brass and if your brass handles are fine and your hinges look pretty good hey put your old ones back on you know it's fine nobody's gonna know the difference except you if you're trying to save money that's a great way to save money is to reuse your existing hardware your existing door strikes your door stops your door bumpers your hinges your handles 
your doorknobs, all of that kind of stuff, okay? All right, let's get this door popped on the hinges. I've got three hinge pins looking for a home.